In this video, we're going to be continuing on from the previous video in this series where we stored all of the Twitter data that we got from the real Donald Trump into a data frame and we did some very basic uh, categorization of that data. So we created a data frame with the ID, length of a tweet, the date that that tweet was created, uh, where that tweet came from, like an iPhone, how many likes that got, retweets, and so on. So we've kind of got this data frame now of every single tweet that we can get from some user for some amount of tweets and we can now take this data and try to visualize it in some way. So what we're going to be doing in this video is we're going to be doing some very simple time series graphs based on the data that we've already stored and created in this data frame. So one thing I guess I first want to do just for consistency's sake is just change this to a lowercase t. It doesn't really make any difference. You can keep it uppercase but I guess I just uh, a bit pedantic, so I just want to make sure that everything's consistent. Okay, so now that we've got all of this, let's go down here. I'm going to get rid of these commented lines. We've got our data frame being created. I'm also going to get rid of this um, showing the head of the data frame since we already know what that looks like. So let's just, before we actually get to plotting, let's just see what we can do from the data frame that we have so far to see what types of insights we can derive with without even actually graphing anything. So for instance, th there's a number of things you can do here. There's you know countless things that you can analyze. Uh, we'll just go over a couple of them and then from there we'll, we'll, we'll look at how we can plot some things. And again, that's also relatively endless as well. So this is by no means um, extensive. This is just kind of dipping your toes into the water of what you can extract from this type of data. So one thing we can get from our data frame that we've already got is let's just say that we want to um, maybe within the data frame we have we want to figure out what is the average length of all of the tweets that we have in our data frame. So we, we here collect 20 tweets and we want to figure out okay what is the average length of all of those 20 tweets and of course we can change this count from 20 to 200 or 400 or whatever we care about. So let's just write in a comment here which is get average length over all tweets. And now that we've stored everything in this data frame, it's going to make it really easy for us to just manipulate the data that's already present in that data frame and then just get this answer. And the way that we can do that is by manipulating the mean function in NumPy, which is just going to be something that we're going to run on a list in the data frame. So let me show you what I mean by that. I'm just going to print out the result that comes from running the mean function. So I'm going to say mpy or mp.mean. There's a little bit of a lag here since sometimes the autocomplete can be annoying in Vim. Uh, so anyway, I'm calling the mean function. And what am I calling the mean function on? I want to figure out the mean of the length of the tweets. So I'm saying df length. So basically what I'm doing there is df length is going to return a list. It's going to return a list of all of the lengths of all of the 20 tweets in this case. And then we're going to be running the uh, mean function which is provided to us from NumPy on that list. And then we're going to get a single number which we're printing out to the screen. So that's what is going on in this line. I'm just going to go ahead and write that, clear the terminal, and then we can go ahead and say Python. This is called visualizing Twitter data pi. And we get here that the average length is 122.2 characters per um, per tweet in this in this size. So we can of course increase that to let's say like maybe I don't know 200 tweets. Let's see how that changes when we get a larger sample of data. So it actually doesn't change terribly much, and it's only gone up by a little bit. So that's kind of interesting. So I'm gonna bring that that back down to 20. Another thing we can ask is let's say we want to figure out what is the tweet that received the most likes in the sample that we've gotten. So we can say get the number of likes for the most liked tweet. So what is uh, what is the tweet that received the most like, or specifically how many likes did the most liked tweet get? So we can also do something pretty similar here. I'm just gonna copy this line, put it here, and instead of taking the mean over a list, what I want to do is take the max because what we want to do is we want to figure out the maximum number of likes that is from the uh, likes column in our data frame. So the likes column stored all of the number of likes for every given tweet. I'm taking the max of that list using the numpy max function and then I'm printing that out to the screen. So again, we can write that, save it, run it, see what we get. So the maximum number of likes it looks like over those 20 tweets was something like 121,862. So I, again, maybe I'm just curious. I want to see how this scales if we increase the number of tweets from 20 to 200. Um, and it looks like it's gone up by a factor of two uh, from 121,000 to 332,000. So that's interesting. Uh, one more. So let's say that we want to do a very similar thing, or instead of getting the number of 
likes, we want to get the number of retweets. So get the number of, uh, let's say, retweets for the most, let's say, retweeted, retweeted tweet. And so that would be the same exact syntax. The only thing that I'm changing here is the operation on which I'm performing the max function on. So instead of performing it on likes, I'm going to be performing it on the retweets column of the data frame and then printing that out to the screen. So let's go ahead and write that and then run it, see what we get. So the maximum number of retweets is 107,000. Uh, so that's interesting as well. So of course, these are just printing out the numbers to the screen. It's very minimal in terms of what we're actually doing with the data. There's endless possibilities for what you can actually do and extract from these sorts of um, insights that we're deriving from this data. So, all right, so now let's move on to plotting some time series data. And I'm just going to put in a comment here to distinguish what we're going to do from what we previously did time series. And let's say hypothetically that what we want to do is we want to create a time series plot that's going to show us the number of, let's say, likes that Donald Trump received on any given day over the course of some days, which we can extract from, you know, some given count here. So we extract, let's say, 200 tweets, maybe that's over you know, ranged over some number of days. And then for every one of those days, Donald Trump got a certain number of likes. We want to plot that number of likes that he got on a given day and then just plot that for every given day over this time series of, of dates. Okay, so that's the general idea of what we want to show. So let's create a variable which we'll call time likes. This is going to be equal to a pandas series object. So we're essentially creating a series object so we can eventually plot this as a time series. So I'm going to say this is equal to PD series. And then uh, this takes two things, the data. So there's a data frame that we want to feed it, um, which is going to be dot values. So this is PD, uh, data frame of likes. So we want to actually get in the number of likes there. That should be in quotes, likes. So we're getting the values of, the, of each of the likes. So every uh, day there's going to be a certain number of likes that are given and we're extracting the values from that. And then, oops, and then what we also want to receive in this time series function is the index. And the index is essentially the x-axis. So what we're plotting um, and then for each what we want to do is for each day show the number of likes. So the number of likes is kind of the y-axis. The date is the time series itself, the number of days. So we're going to set the index is equal to the data frame of the date, which is something that we've already extracted from, uh, from before from our data frame. So this is our time series object that we've created from pandas. And now that's ready for us to actually just go ahead and plot that. So what we can do is we can say time underscore likes dot plot. And what we can do is we can we can feed this a few arguments. Um, I'm going to be feeding this plot function two arguments, basically just the size of the figure, which specifies how big this graph is going to be, um, and then also let's say the color. So this is going to be the color of the line that's plotted throughout the days for every uh, given day. So I'm going to say fig size is equal to uh, I'm just going to say 16 comma four. That's just the x y axis of the image that we're going to see, and then also the uh, color which we can put as red so the function takes in a string in this case it's just a single character that corresponds to a given color and you can consult the uh, documentation for what other parameters this this can take and what valid arguments these parameters can take as well so I'm just kind of hard coding those two um, and you can leave those blank if you want to it's not necessary to put them in there but sometimes you might want to tweak the graphs in some specific way so then what we do once we've kind of created our data that we're going to plot and once we've created our plot that we're going to show, we actually need to show the plot. So we're going to say plt.show. Now this plt is something that we need to actually import from matplotlib, which is going to allow us to uh, show the plots that we've created. So I'm going to go up to the top of my file and I'm going to make sure that I have uh, matplotlib uh, imported. So I'm going to say from import, or I'm going to say, let's say, um, from matplot, actually know what I'll do is import, sorry about that, matplotlib.pyplot as plt. So basically I'm importing this library, specifically matplotlib.pyplot, and I'm importing it as uh, plt. So this will hopefully show up eventually. Sometimes the autocomplete in Vim can 
take a little while. It can lag behind a little bit. There we go. So anyway, so I'm importing the matplotlib library specifically from that. I'm importing pyplot, and then I'm going to refer to that as plt as a shorthand, similar to what we did for numpy and for pandas. So I should also say that you should have matplotlib installed. And if you don't have it installed, you can just open up a new terminal, just make this a little bit bigger, and you can just run pip install matplotlib. And this should install everything that you need. I believe this comes with numpy already. So you might already have it installed if you have numpy installed. If you don't, if you want to be sure, you can run the command that I just ran, which is installing matplotlib. You'll see that I already have this requirement satisfied. So I, I'm, I'm good to go. You might already see that as well. If you don't, then it will install on your machine and then you should be uh, good to go. So I'm just gonna close that, go back to our code here, go back to the bottom of the file, which is where we were previously writing code, and then go from there. So again, just to review, we've created a time series object using pandas. We've created a plot with some specifications and then we're showing that plot using the matplotlib.pyplot module. So let's write this. I'll clear the terminal and then I'm just going to say Python visualizing Twitter data. That's going to pop up a window or it should pop up a window. It doesn't know what data is. Uh, I think the reason for that is this is not um, this is not correct. It's not data, it's date, right? So we want the y, the x-axis to be the uh, dates. So that was my mistake there. Write that again, try it again. So we're going to write this and now what we have here is a sequence of dates along the x-axis, the number of likes on the y-axis, and we can see kind of how the number of likes changes over the course of a given set of dates. So from however long ago we were able to extract 200 tweet from all the way to the present day of this recording. And then there's, you know, maybe a few interesting things that you can see from this graph. There's a big spike right here, number of likes. So it might be interesting to drill down as to why that is. Uh, this, whatever tweet this was got, you know, just head and shoulders above every other tweet here. So that's that might be kind of interesting to uh, examine further. So I'm just going to close that and then go back to our code. So that's a time series for the number of likes, but we can also do time series for other things. So it, it really, we can just kind of modify this code very slightly to do, let's say the time series for uh, retweets. So maybe I'll take this, I'll paste this down here. And then instead of time likes, let's call this time retweets. Uh, let's also rename that. So that's also time retweets. And then the series object that we're going to create, we want to create not with likes, but with retweets. And the date is fine because we still want to see how the retweets, uh, the number of retweets changes over the course of a given set of days. This is fine. We're just creating the same plot and then we just show it. So let's just go ahead and see. I'm just going to comment this initial time series out here, the one that we're doing likes. I'm just going to comment that out so we don't get too many plots. Save that and then run it. So we should get a very similar looking plot where now we can see it kind of a similar type of um, graph. And this spike, you'll notice, also corresponds to the same spike probably where that huge, uh, that tweet that was liked a lot was also retweeted quite a bit too. So you can see the number of retweets here on the left side of the screen, the y-axis is much less than the number of likes. However, uh, the number of retweets is in some way correlated to the number of likes. So that's kind of interesting too. So this tweet, whatever Donald Trump tweeted at this time, seemed to have garnered a lot of likes and retweets. And it seems like the, the graph is somewhat consistent with the number of likes. And perhaps what we could do, just to kind of verify this um, hypothesis or to kind of not verify it, but to give a little bit more evidence that this hypothesis is probably true, is we can we can bunch the time series together onto one plot. So instead of plotting two separate time series where we have one for the number of likes and one for the number of retweets, one thing we can do is we can just put them on the same plot and see how they correlate. So let's just go ahead and do that. So I'm just going to comment this out. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this. So I'm creating the time series likes just like we did before. I'm creating the plot. And I'm going to change the plot actually. Uh, instead of doing the color and the fig size, I'm actually going to change this to, well, I'll leave the fig size. Uh, I will get rid of the color. I'm going to add in a label because we're going to have two lines on this time series. One is going to be a, a label for the number of likes and one is going to be a label for the number of retweets. So for this one, this is likes. I'm going to uh, put this line as labeled as likes. And then I'm also going to put in a legend is equal to true. So this basically will put in a little box in the in the time series chart, which will show us 
what line corresponds to what label. And that's going to be kind of helpful because what, what's nice about uh, pandas and matplotlib is that if we plot multiple lines here, it will be smart enough to distinguish them by assigning them a different color. And then what we're doing here is we're essentially just labeling each of those lines from uh, whatever they represent, and then we're going to put in a legend, which is essentially going to correspond to this blue line is likes, this orange line is retweets. And it's going to make it easier for us to kind of visualize what's going on. So that will be a little bit more clear when you actually see the graph. Uh, I, I think describing it without seeing it is a little bit is, is a little bit difficult. So anyway, let me copy this right here, and instead of actually, I'll just copy this right here, which is uh, corresponding to the retweets. So doing the same thing for the re retweets, I'm going to copy that uh, thing here, get rid of that. So all I'm doing here is I'm just making sure that the plot is formatted the same exact way as it is for the likes. I'm going to change the label here to retweets. So just to confirm what we've got, we've got our time likes, we've got our time retweets. Those are both the series objects from pandas that correspond to the time series data that we want to plot. We create a plot for the time. Uh, sorry, for the likes, we create a plot for the retweets. And then what we're going to do is we're going to have one single plot.show call, plt.show call. And then that is going to put the single plot up on the screen and we'll see both those lines put on there together. So I go ahead and write that and then let's just run this and see what we get. So we get the two plots up against each other. So we've got the dates, again, just like before, and the number of uh, either retweets or likes on the y-axis. And you can see that right now we put legend is equal to true. That's giving us this little box here in the upper right corner of the plot. So likes is denoted by the blue line and then orange is denoted by the uh, uh, the retweets is denoted by the orange line. So what we, what we can kind of see is that there is indeed some correlation between the uh, likes and retweets. So first of all, there's a lot more likes than retweets, but you can see certain spikes that arise in the likes also correspond to spikes that arise in the retweets as well. So that's very topical and probably something you could have arrived at without doing any sort of a, a plot analysis on it, but it's kind of interesting to see the data uh, being visualized like this. This is more just kind of an exercise in what you can do using this type of uh, data. So again, that's pretty much it for this video. I just wanted to showcase some very basic visualization capabilities of matplotlib using pandas, numpy, and of course the Twitter data that we extracted. So if you have any questions or comments, don't hesitate to leave them in the comment section below. As always, the code will be available on my GitHub and you can download that at the link provided in the description. Thanks again for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.